everybody, um, nearly six o'clock. Uh, it's Carol at Mainly Pilates. Um, we're doing our live workouts because I normally teach on a Thursday night and I'm really missing it and my clients have told me they're missing it too. So we'll do our best. We're doing quite a tough one tonight because last week, if you remember, was really lazy. So tonight is tough. We're doing Tabata, two sets of Tabata timing. Um, but as I tell you, uh, Pilates is for every level. I will show you the easy levels and then I will show you harder levels and harder levels and harder levels and you have to choose. Now you must remember that you're not supposed to exercise and I will never give you permission to exercise if you have injuries that you haven't spoken to somebody, your doctor or somebody about and you haven't had permission to do Pilates. You must have permission, sorry, you must have permission to do Pilates if you have injuries because I can't see you, I wish I could, but I can't see you and actually nobody else can see you. Hi, so you're not in competition with anybody and if you do these exercises at your level you will quickly improve your strength and especially the core strength, pelvic floor strength. If you do them wrong, especially the planks we're doing, you're very likely to hurt your back and the whole point of Pilates is to make things better, not to make them worse. So please, please do your Pilates for your body. And uh, I don't know, I, I nag about it, I know, but that's the way it is. So we're nearly, oh, it is six o'clock. Hi, Audrey, you'll probably like this um, for your breaststroke. Right, we're going to do um, a Tabata squat and we're going to do a Tabata plank. We may even do a Tabata side plank if we are up for it. Uh, but of course, we always start with our posture because poor posture is most of our problems. So you start with your feet together, turn your toes out at 10 to 2 and lift your heels behind. And if you look now, my hips and my knees are all in alignment with each other, which is just what Mother Nature intended. Now I want to lengthen my neck. Now if you just watch how tall I am now, and by pulling from the inside of my head, the very, very middle there, by my roots, <laughs> I just lift and look how much I grow. So I've gone from there to there. Don't I look taller and slimmer already? I take my shoulders high, all the way back, all the way down, and obviously that is awkward and uncomfortable. So you just shake it a little bit to shake it off. And then you still have your chest broadened and these muscles are being strengthened. Okay, we need to engage the core. Now the quickest way is if you put your hands on your belly and cough, and if your hands go out, <coughs> that's opposite to engaging your core. Bring them in, <coughs> that's engaging your core. Same for the pelvic floor. If you cough and your pelvic floor goes down, that's completely the opposite of what we want. Now try coughing again and bringing your pelvic floor up. Uh -huh. That's what you want. Now we need neutral spine. If you put your hands on your hips and just tip your pelvis forward, which this bit is coming forward, so it's tipping your pelvis forward, anterior. Now you can swivel and tip it back and forward. This is really good mobility, hi. So if you have been sat down all day at your desk, like I have, Nicola, you'll like this Nicola, it's a tough one. It was easy last week. Keep tipping forward, keep tipping back and back. Now make that movement smaller and smaller and smaller until you stop in the middle and that is a neutral spine. So you're supposed to have a curve here. You're supposed to have a little bit of a lump here and you're supposed to have a curve here. That's what Mother Nature intended, and that is the most economical way to stand up straight without falling in a heap and using the least muscle power. Doesn't feel like it. If you're used to standing like this, or worse, used to standing like this or this, it will feel odd and you will be using different muscles. But you just have to get used to it. And especially when you're sitting down at your desk or standing up, you know, doing somebody's hair, we stand like this an awful lot and you need to get the shoulders down and back to lengthen here and strengthen here. So you have a balance, balance front to the back and balance side to side. And that way you have less injuries, less repetitive strain injuries and less uh, bad necks, shoulders and backs. 
So that's us all set up. Because I've got some new people here, let's just say, breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. You should be breathing four seconds in, and four seconds out. If you find yourself panting, you're working too hard, and the worst thing, and I can't see it tonight, but normally, if you hold your breath, it's really bad for you, and when I'm actually with clients, I know who's holding their breath, because their face all goes purple, and then you heard, suddenly you hear, so that's the giveaway, but you've got to look after yourself tonight. Okay, we're going to mobilise all the joints because we're using them. Why would you use them without mobilising them first? Okay, let's do the wrists. And we can do one leg at a time. If you can see my legs, right? So I'm turning my wrist, turning my wrist, turning my wrist, turning my foot. Hands down, hands up. Got a message. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hands back, hands down. Change leg. Turn them round. Hi. I can't read the messages properly because I've got something in my eye and I went to the hospital today and they put some dye in it and all sorts and I'm a bit blurry. Okay, now we just want to warm up the shoulders. Take them up and bring them down. Take them up. So notice I'm not shrugging my shoulders up to my ears. I'm leaving my shoulders down and lifting the arm. Now let's make that movement bigger. I'm not losing my neutral spine by arching my back. All the work is being done by my shoulders. Now shoulder circles. Again, I'm not taking my shoulders up. I'm turning the circles. Do small first. And when you know what your maximum is, go up to your maximum. My shoulders are really supple, so it sickens a few people. <laughs> Sorry. Notice I'm not arching my back, I'm keeping my neutral spine, because that's, that's what's going to be strengthening your spine now. If you can do all this stuff, all the stuff I ask you to do now, if you can do all this stuff whilst keeping your neutral spine, that's strengthening it, because all the time you are keep going, you're holding those muscles in the right position, whilst the rest of your body's moving, and all that is strengthening your muscles. So it might look like all you're doing is circling your arms, but actually you're already working. And change direction, small first, and then if there's no pain, you go big. Now, those of you that are new, please remember you go up to, not into pain. So you can do Pilates, with an injury, if you've been given permission, let's just change this to out and wide, out and wide. Uh, yeah, you can do Pilates with an injury uh, if you've been given permission. And the reason Pilates is good for you for rehabilitation is because you go up to your diagonal, you go up to your pain level. So if I had a bad shoulder, this shoulder might be good and this one might not be very good but I don't force it at all. So because I'm not forcing it, I'm not increasing the inflammation. I'm letting the inflammation die back, and if you let the inflammation die back, that's when you get better. So it's up to you. If you've got a bad shoulder, the least you force it and overuse it, the quicker you'll get better. And so instead of taking six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, it might take two or three weeks. And I, I am living proof of that. Okay, let's move down a little bit. This is really good if you have a bad back, you know if you've been standing for ages, no names Nicola, if you've been standing for ages and you've got a bit of back pain, put your hands on your hips and just circle them round and then as it all loosens off, go as big as you like. Now remember to hold on to that core here so we're not going, we're going keeping it in. So you start small and go as big as you like. But remember, I'm not moving this forward and backwards. This is staying up to the ceiling. And then change direction. I do miss you all. Right, so now you have to think about your own body. And as long as this didn't hurt at all, 
We're moving on to a more aggressive version of the same thing. But if that hurt, even a teeny bit, you just do the same but smaller, okay? But if it didn't, now you take the head round. It's as though you're trying to draw a great big circle on the ceiling with your head. I keep my hands here just for support. And if you're feeling a bit supple and it's not hurting at all, you can make this as big as you like. You can even now do a nice stretch for the bum and the hamstrings down the back of the leg all the way around. Slowly though, you never do it quickly because if you're going to hurt yourself and you have got stiff muscles because you haven't been using them all day, the worst thing you can do is just like fling yourself around, asking for trouble. Okay, and change directions. So those of you who are new to me, my Pilates is a little bit more therapeutic than, it's not very often relaxing, apart from last week we did one, but it stretches that are really good for you and should be done after every workout. And it's rehabilitation exercises to fix dud things. Okay, it's improving your balance, first part of your balance. Take one toe out to the front, draw a semicircle on the floor. Notice I'm not lifting my hip, I'm keeping them level and bring it back. Now, if you're good at balancing, you could try here instead. The narrower you are always, the harder it is to balance. So if you need a bit more help, you could be out here, and I've actually got a wall here that you probably can't see. I have no problem with people holding onto the wall because at least you're doing the movements properly with good form rather than wobbling all over the place. Okay? And if you've got any special requests, you can just message me and I'll... Um, oh, Simon, I didn't think you were coming. Nice one. Don't judge my roots. Dreadful. All right, now let's lift that knee and turn it out. We're just mobilising this hip joint. It's a ball and socket joint and it's the biggest one in the body and it can go every which way. And you need to keep it moving because if it stiffens up on you, oh, it's, the biggest it's the biggest joint in your whole body. You can't let it stiffen up on you. Okay, we're just going to swing front to back. I'm going to hold on, you can as well, because if I'm standing here swinging, I'm worrying about my balance if I hold on, right, gentle swing. We're not gymnasts. Well, you might be. I'm not anymore. And look, I'm not tipping forward and they're definitely not doing this. If I do this, you keep going. I'm not really stretching my hamstring at all there, am I? Because I'm actually releasing it off and I'm not stretching my bum. By keeping straight and just swinging here, everything's getting a workout. And what happens is then you quickly loosen all the muscles, they warm up and they loosen, and then your range of movement improves. And now I'm going to go side to side, somehow, here. So what I'm doing, if you can see, is I'm just opening up my hip now side to side. Okay, and of course we do the same on the other side. So start here, point foot forward, turn it back and back. Does somebody leave me a message? Keep going. <laughs> okay, now we're going to bring the knee up. And turn it out. So we're practicing your balance at the same time. Balance is vital. Like 90,000 people a year fall over and break their hip just because they forgot how to balance. Don't be one of those. We don't want to go to the hospital at the moment, do we? Okay, now we're going to swing front to back. Balance if you can. If you can't, just hold a wall. <sighs> If your range of movement is this, and this is already pulling on your hamstrings and your bum and your hip flexor, which is this one here, that's enough. Don't go any further. 
what will happen is you'll do bad form you'll go like this and bend the leg and you just have bad form instead of doing your own thing keep the core engaged and then side to side mm -hmm. keep your balance got any questions try and question me but like I said I've had I've had some orange yellow stuff put in my eye today and um, <laughs> beer and so I can't see very well <laughs> right we're gonna start work now inhale exhale drop down into what's called awkward chair so this isn't awkward chair that's not doing me any good at all awkward chair is staying upright and dropping down as low as you can and what you'll see is my knees stay parallel over my feet there you go and back up so when it's coming to ski season which unfortunately a lot of people have missed we do stacks of this so I can reach my ears here so I keep them there I don't let them drop forward and back up and again this time go as low as you can this is a warm-up because we're doing Tabata squat. And back up. Now we're going to do the same but with our feet wide. So inhale through prayer position. Take the knees out over the feet. So we don't want them coming in because that's really bad for them. Down and back up. Inhale. Another one, we go down as far as we can. Inhale, exhale down, and if you can, you can keep going, keep going, keep going, and you can push your knees wide with your elbows and rock from side to side. If you can come up from there, do, but if you can't, put your hands to the floor, straighten the legs to mild tension, which might be here, might be here. Put your hands on your knees, roll all the way up, and we're done. So now we're going to do the first one, which is Tabata timing. It's a killer. Okay, so Tabata is... Three, Ooh. Two, one. Here we go. 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest, and we're doing squats. Now, you can make your squats as big as you like for you. So you could be here, you could be here, okay? But it's 20 seconds work, can you see? Rest. Oh. Go. Now you can alternate if you want to to wide because when you're doing this, a it gives your muscles a bit of a rest, but also when you go wide, you're using your bum muscles a bit more and your inner thighs a bit more. So then you get a rest. So rest. I'm going to now go back to legs here. wide for the next one rest if you need to kick your legs out you can even have weights you can do so if you're going to do this again because it will stay on Facebook and I'll also put it on my YouTube channel so if you're going to do this again you can have weights so you could do squats with weights like this you choose because sometimes we just want to work out Halfway. All right. 
And now I'm doing one closed again. Keep breathing. If you need a rest, please do. If you're just a bit out of breath, keep going. You'll get fitter. So my heart rate's nice and high. Not killing me. Wide. And if you don't have weights, you can use anything. You can use tins of beans, bottles of water, logs, I've got some logs here. If anybody saw my little short video yesterday, I actually had a garden chair and I was doing this with a garden chair. Use anything. Oh, this one. <clears throat> Hope you're all well and not um, suffering with this COVID. It's horrible, it's frightening. I won't be rushing out anywhere on Friday, uh, Monday. See, it's all right, isn't it? Three, two, one. I'm sure if your name is Simon, Maine or Burgess, you could have tins of beer, bottles of beer, bottles of wine, a balanced diet, bottle in each hand. <laughs> yeah, I should be on the telly. Three, two, one. There, how bad was that? Go round the floors. Okay, well I like that. I've never used that one before. I um we will be doing it again later for plank. Just get your breath back. If you've got any questions, bring them on camera. Bring what oh hi Jilly. Oh I hope you're okay. Hi Claire. Who else have I got? Julie, hello. Got your breath back yet? Bring them on camera. Does that mean I can bring you on camera? Hi Gina. Hello Nikki. See there's lots here for you. Right, I presume now you've got your breath rate right down again. Have you? Oh, what a shame. All right then. Okay, we're gonna do plank now because we've done the lower body. Now we're gonna do the upper body. Now plank, you could hurt yourself doing plank. If you have a bad back, you could do plank like this. I would say this is plank. Now this isn't anything, this is called extending your back. Anything extending your back in plank is so bad for you, you mustn't, mustn't do it. All you're doing is squeezing the discs. And if you're squeezing the discs out here and you've got a slip disc that's sticking out a little bit, oh, that's gonna hurt. So you mustn't do it. So. There's two planks, there's high plank up here, and then there's low plank here. So, what we're gonna do now is high plank. If you hate it, please change and do low plank. And uh, we are doing Tabata timing, and there's lots and lots of different planks. The basic, simple, simple plank, as in straightforward, not simple, none of it's simple. I have my wrists underneath my shoulders, Take one leg out, get this level. So we don't want it sticking up in the air, we want it level. Now, when it's level, brace your core. Oh, neck is lengthened. So I'm looking just in front of me on the floor. When I'm sorted, I can then slowly take that leg out. Then you will realize how tough plank is. This, you're cheating. This is perfect and this is really bad for you. So if that, you just try that now, and if you hate that, this is your plank here. So again, you don't have a dodgy back, you have a flat back, shoulders are still down and back, core's tight, bum's tight. If that's hurting your knees, if you lift your toes up, then you're resting all the weight on the fleshy muscle here instead of the kneecap. So your plank could be here. Okay, and then for people who are here, if this is too easy, 
One of the sets we're going to do toe to shoulder taps. Another one we're going to do toe taps out. Another one we're going to do leg kicks out. So you can choose plank because if you want to really, really work hard, go for it. But I've got to do the different levels to show everybody. So I'm actually going to turn around, I think. Choose your plank, get in it. Oh no, oh golly. Are we ready? I've got 10 seconds to think about it. Can you see that over my head? Only eight sets, 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest. So first one, notice how I'm staying here. Bum's not moving, neck's not moving. I'm looking at the floor in front of me like this. And the best rest, you might not need a rest now, but you will towards the end, and that's your best rest. Three, two, okay. One. This time you can stay there, or you can make it harder by shoulder, top, shoulder taps, but don't be having the bum going around like a mad thing. It's a conscious decision to lift the hand, keep the hips there, squeezing Three, the bum. And relax. Next one, we're going to do toe taps one at a time. One, 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 one. Three, two, one. Okay, out, in, out, in. Keeping the core tight, shoulders are still down and back. I'll show you from the side so I'm not over my shoulders. And relax. Next one, we're jumping both feet out. Three, two, one. Again, if this is tough on your shoulders, you can miss one out or you can just stay here. Still breathing? Next one, you're going to start here and you're going to tip from side Three, to side. Two, one. Okay, tip, tip, so only 20 seconds. Okay, I can feel my heart racing now. Next one is one arm lift, one leg lift. You work, may well fall over. Okay. I'm doing this side now for 20. Core tight, no swinging of the bum. Oh, that's hard. Now, of course, we've got to do the other side. Two, Don't forget, you can come back to this any time. You can miss one out. Anybody counting how many we've done? Oh, one. one more. Um what I was going to do. Basic plank or for me I think the hardest one is this one. Get your heart rate up. And relax. Well done. The best stretch is child pose here. Arms are out, your elbows are off the floor, your ribs are on your knee, on your thighs, easing your bum down towards your heels. Now, top tip. 
if you take your hands slightly wider, if you watch my shoulders here, if I turn my armpits in towards each other, what that does shortens my chest, stretches my back. So it's armpits in towards each other. I hope you can see that. The opposite is turn the armpits away. My hands aren't moving. So can you see the difference from there to there? And that open chest opens your chest. And if I've been doing loads of press-ups or things like that, chest presses, that is the very best one because it really stretches your chest whilst you're like down relaxing. Another top tip, if you want to do your inner thighs at the same time, you put your toes together, knees wide, and do the same stretch. Okay, now we're gonna have a lie down, because you've earned it. <laughs> we're gonna do one that's quite easy, and if anybody has any injuries, you must let me know. We're gonna do a stretch first. Everybody's gonna do the stretch, and then Keeping doing the stretch is really, really good for you. Good for your spine, good for your hips, good for your shoulders. But those of you who want to work, and I know some of you do, uh, we're really upgrading it. So we're going to end up doing windscreen wipers with the legs. But here we go. Let's all start with a twist and a stretch. So you put your arms out to the side, knees are together, feet are together. Inhale, as you exhale, you... Take both knees over to one side. Look how this foot has to come off the floor. So I've got my bunions stuck together, my heels stuck together, my knees stuck together. You might not be able to go that far, you might only be able to go to here, but that's all you need for a nice spine twist. And bring them back. Inhale, brace everything, and exhale over to the side. Go as far as you can without any pain, ever, ever, ever. Inhale. Exhale back up. Right, so you can carry on doing that because it's very therapeutic for your back, or take your arms out. Now you need to learn about your neutral spine. You've done neutral spine standing up. Neutral spine when you're lying down. Look how you can arch your back and stick the fingers under. Now look how you can squeeze down onto your back. Now when you squeeze down onto your back, I'm not asking you to pelvic tilt because you won't be able to do it. What I'm asking is you squeeze your back down to the floor whilst keeping those hips on the floor. Another way of helping you learn that is to put your, finger, your thumbs on your ribs, fingertips on your hips. So instead of bringing your hips up, which is what I said is a big no-no, leave your hips there and bring your ribs slightly down to your hips. What you're doing is switching your six pack on to help. It's called imprinting the spine. I suppose it's like you're trying to imprint your spine on the floor, but you don't have to go that far down. So, I want you to inhale, as you exhale, take one leg to tabletop. This is tabletop. This is cheating, because all the weight is here and it's resting. If you have your leg at tabletop, or the other side of tabletop, then you're working, okay? So, how's that feel? Take it back down, and bring the other one back up. I hope some of you have already gone into windscreen wipers, because you know it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's try that again. Inhale. When you're lifting now, does your back move even a millimetre off the floor? If it does, make sure you stay at this level or go back to the stretch. But otherwise, bring your one leg up to, it, to a tabletop. Inhale, imprint the spine. Bring the other leg to tabletop. Now, how about that? That in itself is quite a strong core muscle exercise. So you can take one down and the other one down and relax. Yeah. Same again with the other leg first. Inhale, bring it to tabletop. Imprint the spine, take the other leg to tabletop. Arms out. That might be enough, you can carry on doing that. However, if you wish, here we go, we're going to take all of that lot over to one side as best you can. You don't have to go to the floor if you don't want to, but I can reach the floor. Inhale and exhale back up. You try and exhale on the effort. So inhale to release it down. Exhale to bring it back up. Okay, so as you, some of you know, your leg is a lever. 
the longer the lever, the heavier it is. So if that's too easy for you, and I know some of you it is, have your legs straight. These are pointy toes, these are flexed toes. If you do all my exercises with flexed feet, you're also getting a stretch down the calf, hamstring, into the bum. So you might as well multitask, you know what I'm like. So inhale, exhale, inhale at the bottom. And I'm not on the floor, by the way, I'm hovering. I hope you can see it when I do this side. So inhale, exhale on the effort. I'm taking those feet almost to the floor, but not quite. Inhale, exhale back up. Off you go, windscreen wipers. Stop if you need to. And the best way to stop is to just bring the legs in and the rest is hugging your knees. But do that whenever you need to, and if you don't need to, keep going. Brace that core. Don't let your back suffer. I see somebody just sent me a message. They think I scratched my eyeball at the hospital. So, they give me this junk to put in it, <laughs> so it's yellow. But I have to do that three times a day. But I can't really see properly out of it, it's a bit blurry. Good to have my other eyes okay. So how are you going? Is this all right? I like this one. By the way, if you press down on your shoulders, you're getting a nice shoulder workout. My shoulders aren't leaving the floor at all. So in other words, if you watch now, I'm not coming off like this. I'm keeping that there so it's a really good spine twist but if you go too far don't do it don't do it okay i'm going to do one more each side and then i'm going to show you we're all going to do the stretch again together at the end so bring the knees in hug the knees into the chest and i'll get back on my mat <laughs> i've moved See, I've already burnt 178 calories already. Right, take the feet down and we go back to the very beginning where you take both legs over because after we've worked, we always want to stretch off. So we've worked those muscles really hard, now we're stretching them up. And if I look across my opposite hand, then I'm getting a full spine twist all the way from down there, all the way up to the top of my head. And relax. <sighs> Now, head comes back to the ceiling, inhale, as you exhale, legs come back up to the ceiling. Of course, we always do both sides, inhale, exhale, relax into it, and then look across the opposite hand. I was going to do this outside tonight, but it was actually a huge rain cloud right above us. So if you find your knees are apart here, it means you've gone too far. So you need to come back to here to keep your knees clamped rather than letting one go, okay? Bring them back up. Now I've got another lovely stretch while we're here because somebody specifically asked me about sciatica. Sciatica could be caused by a tight piriformis muscle here. This is your piriformis. If that's tight, it squeezes down onto your sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve comes out here, goes down the leg, and it can go all the way to your ankle. Now if that's the cause of your sciatica, there's a few nice stretches for you which we're gonna do now. Right, so cross one ankle over the knee and just push the knee away and you're getting a really good stretch in the hip. Never go into pain. So all your stretches are supposed to be up to, not into, pain. Hmm. And nobody's watching, so you're not competing with anybody. Right, release that. Now I want you to take the hands and take them through the gap, bring the head and shoulders up and the leg up, and grab the back of the, ang uh, back of the thigh. Now I can now, my arms are long enough, I can now relax back. But what I'm doing is I'm gently, very gently, pulling my thigh towards me. And what that's doing is opening up the hip a bit more. I don't know if you want to see my bum, but <laughs> from here, this is what it looks like. And 
you hold that, we want to hold it for about 30 seconds. And it should be relaxing. It's only unrelaxing if you are overdoing it. Now another thing I do to multitask is I can straighten this leg with my foot flexed and now at the same time as opening up the hip and getting a nice bum stretch, I'm now also getting a hamstring stretch and a calf stretch. What's not to love? So I'm going to lower that down, release it down and cross the legs. Same the other side, cross the ankle over, push the knee away to open up the hip. Release it, lift your head and shoulders, lift the leg, grab the back of the thigh, interlock the fingers, bring the thigh towards you, relax down and remember a cheeky little hamstring stretch as well. By the way, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the leg is up to the ceiling, not across. So in other words, we're not here, we're here. Sorry about my bum. So for me, that's a much better stretch on that side than the other side, to be honest. Mind you, that is my dodgy hamstring there. There's one more you can do while you're lying down and I'm going to do it this way so you can see my good form. Bring this leg in as tight as you can to your chest. So I'm actually trying to get my thigh onto my ribs. You know, if you've got a nice little belly here, you won't be able to get quite as close as long as you're getting a stretch here. That's all you need to do. So I'm pulling my knee towards me. Now I'm putting my hands under my bum and I want to be able to keep that distance there. I'm taking that leg across without lifting the bum off the floor. If I lift the bum off the floor, I'm doing another spine twist. We don't want a spine twist, we want a bum, a bum stretch. They're called your glutes, by the way. And then bring it back up, swap them over. Now take it across, but again, make sure this stays on the floor. Oh look, that's not as supple as the other side. Feels nice. It should feel like you're scratching an itch. It should not feel shake. If it's shaking at all, it's because you're forcing it. Brilliant. And take it back across, bring it down. So, give us a thumbs up if you want another exercise or stay silent if you want to carry on stretching. I'm leaving that up to you. Somebody. Somebody has sent me a message. But I can't read it. I feel sick. Charming. Oh, well, you would if you're drinking. Ah, oh, okay, so we've got thumbs up there. We're doing another exercise, two Tabata, and it's about side plank. Now, this is where you really will need to make a choice about whether you want to be down here on your elbow or much harder to be up here because now you're only on one arm. But I've got this dodgy elbow on this side, so I like to do mine high. People complain about side plank because they say it hurts their shoulder. The reason it hurts your shoulder, if you look, is, is because I'm sinking into it. You have to grow out of it, which is strengthening your shoulder. But if you sink into it like this, it hurts. So grow out of it. Uh, side plank, we've got one leg straight, and I've got my knee on the floor. So there's three points in contact with the floor taking the strain. What we don't need is your bum out. What we want is them all to be in a straight line. Okay? And 
if you're upright, uh, same thing up here. You could be here, you could have one knee on the floor. As long as you are in this nice position here. Okay, so because we've got two arms, we've only got to do four on each side. Piece of cake. Okay, same timings. Ooh. Are we ready? Oh gosh. Can't move that. Yeah. Ooh. So this is just your warm-up anyway. So get into your position. I'm going high plank. I'm going to do the first one with my knee down. Hold, hold, hold. So while we're here, you're reaching up towards the ceiling. You're pushing the floor away from you. Your neck's not here. This is, sorry, this is set two. Ooh, good. So you could have that other leg off the floor. It's up to you. Three, you know. Two, one, two. Right, we're up in it a little bit. You can carry on doing that, or we're going to be dipping the hips and raising them. Three, two, it's tough, one, so you can change any time you like. So it's dip and up, dip and up. You have only got 20 seconds. And this is the last exercise, by the way. Gosh, 20 seconds is forever. Oh. Shake your shoulder off. We've only got one more. So this time we're gonna be bringing the arm under. So you choose your place and then you bring the arm under and out, under and out, keeping those hips there, under and out. So this is the last one on this side, and this is the last work exercise. Everything else is stretching, panic not. Brilliant. Change sides. Remember, you can have your knee down, or you can leave it up, it's up to you. Some of you will even be doing this. You yogis there. Three, I've fallen two, over. One, <sighs> Shake. Three, two, one. Stretching up to the ceiling, knee down if you need to, knee up if you don't, foot in the air if you can, don't worry if you can't. Keep breathing, don't hold your breath. Three, two, one. So the next one is dipping up and down, shake it off. Okay, so it's dipping. So there's only 40 seconds work left. Not even that anymore. I have to talk myself into it. Three, two, one. Oh. Okay, one more, 20 seconds, and that's where we bring the hand under. Okay, keeping the hips there, bringing the hand under. Under control, so we're not letting it drop and swing, we're taking it down and bringing it up. Three, two, one, two. Uh, brilliant. I love that. <laughs> right. What we need now is some stretching. Sit comfortably. You need to stretch your wrists off. Look at that, snake them. Oh. They've worked really hard today, haven't they? I thought the whole thing was hard. God, what have we done? So I've burnt 237 calories in 
45 minutes and the other way. Not bad going is it when they say Pilates is for girls. Shake them off. Kick them. Now ankles and wrists. Pull them back, kick them out. Pull them back, kick them out. Circle them. And the other way. Right, we need to stretch the belly and we need to stretch the sides. So I think the best way to do this, lying on your front, full body stretch. So I'm being pulled from that way to that way. Okay, pushing your hips into the floor. Now we're going to come up to Cobra. Bring your elbow under your shoulder, other elbow under your shoulder. So we don't want the shoulders here, we want them relaxed and away from the ears. And what that's doing now is I'm just pushing my belly down towards the floor to get a full stretch in my belly. If you get cramp in your toes like I do, just tuck them under. So some of you yogis, you might be here in your coat, as long as your ears are away from your elbows. Now we want to come back down. Full body stretch again, and then leaving the hips on the floor and leaving the shoulders on the floor, fidget your way across because we want to do a side stretch because you've worked these sides really hard. Now you can fidget your feet as long as you're not lifting your hip up, fidget the foot across till you're in a nice banana shape and you're getting a stretch from here all the way down to your ankle. And relax. You can do this on your back as well, by the way, but you can't do cobra on your back. Now fidget back to the middle, fidget back to the middle, and of course off to the other side. Hmm. Relax, making sure the hip stays on the floor. So we've done everything, the shoulders with the plank, the back with the plank, the bum with the plank, the squats with the legs, plank was for the shoulders, side plank was for the sides, we've touched everything. And back to the middle. Now we're going to stretch the shoulders out. Best way, and to multitask again, take your knees wide, feet together, hands out in front and relax down. So I'm trying to get my bum down onto my feet. A lot of people can't, that's not a problem as long as you're attempting to. My elbows are off the floor. Turn your armpits in towards each other. And relax. Now turn your armpits away and stay relaxed. I'm still getting the inner thigh stretch here, but I'm now getting a chest stretch. And relax. Help yourself back up. We're just going to do the front to back and the hip flexor stretch. And this is the time where if you've got any questions, you can ask me. Because I'm coming a little bit nearer. Hoping this junk's gone out of my eye and I can actually um, see properly. Hello, lovely. <laughs> there we go. Right, we're stretching the hip flexors. We did loads of stretches last week and I did a mini video. So while my hips are here, in line with my knees, in line with my shoulders, take a big stride forward. And relax down into it. And I mean relax, because it shouldn't hurt. If it hurts, it's because you've gone too far. Any questions? Any suggestions for next week? Oh yeah, and I'm putting this on YouTube, I hopefully tonight, if our broadband is quick enough, and then I can email it out to anybody, uh, or you can go on my YouTube channel, which is mainly Pilates, and you can look at it and do it as many times as you like. Pass it on to friends, it's all free. Take your time.
your hands back to the floor, bring that leg back, come back up, same the other side. These stretches that I'm afraid are the kind of things I do when I'm watching telly because I'm not very good at sitting still and I do like stretching. So. Oh, I just had a request. Carry on. Got a message. Bring them on camera. What does that mean? Bring them on camera. Oh, guest request. Allow your viewers to join you as a guest. Oh, come on. Just do this for me, please, Gina. What's happening? Oh, yeah, I've just got a little picture of you on the side. Okay, come out of that stretch. Oh, I like that. I can see you. Okay, the only other thing I want to show you, because this is for Sarah, is um, she lives in a small, uh, long, a big longboat. And she was asking about stretches. And so the ones we just did on the floor for your sciatica, we can do standing up. You can lean on something if you're worried about falling over. But otherwise, it's exactly the same stretch. You bring the knee up, tight to the chest, and then you take it across the body without turning the hips. So the hips stay where they are, just the knee moves, and then you've got your stretch. So how much space do you need? Like, what, two square feet? Not bad. And then the other one that we did lying down, cross it over the ankle, push the knee away and sink down into it. And that's again, same stretch, but instead of having to lie down, we're standing up. And always do this other side. So bring it up, keep the bum and hips where they are and take the leg across. So if you had sort of sciatica type pain in your bum, these are very safe to do and you can do them for up to 30 seconds and you can do them like three times each and you can do them three times a day you know it's all helping you get better quickly if you just go once a week to the physio and they do some nice work for you and then you don't do anything else yourself it's going to take you months and months to recover but if you think of it as a prescription look at me falling over if you were given <laughs> If you were given a prescription, take this tablet three times a day, you'd do it, wouldn't you? So if your physio says do these three times a day, you must do them. They're good for you. Okay. Right, I just want you to swing your arms forward. Dip down. Right, now I'm giving you permission to push your knees forward because I want to stretch the calf muscles. So instead of doing a awkward chair, we're now sinking the knees forward. Can you feel that lovely stretch in the back of the calves? And back up. Making sure your knees stay in line with your toes. Ah, lovely. And it's really sunny outside. I am going to get the hammock out and I'm going to have a glass of wine in the garden. If you have any questions, let me know. Right, up onto your toes, lift your heels. Up onto your toes, lift your heels or whatever it is, lift your toes. What am I saying? Okay, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale one more time, up onto your toes, and you're done. You can give yourself a big clap. See you next week. Hope you all stay safe and have a lovely bank holiday. Bye. Now, I'm not actually sure how to end this.